It's November 2025. I spent the last weekend building a whole bunch of level shifters, as you can see here. My little assembly line is just going. I, I put a lot of care and work into these. The design is all mine, and you can see, aside from the PCB, which is manufactured, I'm not going to say by whom because they don't want to sponsor my little channel. It's one of the big two. Nonetheless, I do hand solder the wires, and of course, I glue them into my custom 3D printed cases. It really makes life easier if you don't want to learn how to solder, you don't want to do any wiring, you, you don't want to program an ESP32 behind your Raspberry Pi, you just want to plug and and play this is the video for you and this is the device that will get you through it without further ado let's get into basically my march video but re-edited for november with some updates and some other little changes and without that annoying background music you guys complained about welcome or welcome back to justin nelson's project if you're new here i cover automotive 3d printing electronics you name it Subscribe for more fun, and now, back to the video. I actually use and recommend Hyper HDR. It's a fork of Hyperion, but you will find me use the term Hyperion throughout this video as a generic term for this type of project. As long as you're using my level shifter kit, the only tool that you might need is a pair of household scissors. Links to all the required hardware are down below in the description and on my website. Today, I'm doing this on a small TV, mostly because my two larger TVs already have Hyperion in Installed. But the smaller TV also makes it easier to demonstrate on video. This particular TV is configured as a wall mount, but the same steps apply to just about any flat screen television. You're going to want to lay the TV face down on a stable soft surface, such as a bed or a couch, and then follow along with the next section. If you don't have your hardware just yet, go ahead and watch the next section so you can see just how easy this project really can be. With that out of the way, Let's breathe new life into this old, non-smart Vizio. This right here is everything we need to do a Hyperion install on a 32-inch television. We have, of course, an old Vizio 32-inch TV. And today we're going to use the SK6812 RGBW LED. It works exactly the same as a 2812B, except it adds a white LED to each pixel. Now, this is just a 1080 TV, so we're going to use a little Roku guy here. We're going to use a Raspberry Pi 02W with a nice little heat sink on there. We are going to use our recommended HDMI splitter these are our corner brackets that you get as part of the accessories bundle with my level shifter as well as the power injection coupler crimp connector there is my recommended hdmi capture device and of course the star of the show our led strips now what we need to do is figure out how exactly we want to mount these and where our starting point is going to be well since the hdmi inputs are on this side on this television we're going to kind of put everything right about here so this will be our input put corner one issue that we're dealing with is this cutout so how do we get around that there are a few methods but we're going to go the easy way and just run it down here and go ahead and leap up over to the top of the television we'll start here and we'll end at the same point over here we want to be over the vents here or we could run right down the middle it's kind of a spot there i like to be not right on the edge of the television so let's do that so i think where my finger is that's where we're going to cut i'm going to cut this and make sure you cut right in the center of those pads. Now, that leaves us with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 20, 22 LEDs. Let's go ahead and measure out for the other side. And the simplest way to do that is line it up with the uh, piece you just cut. But remember how many LEDs. You'll need to know that number later. And remember, the arrows need to point in the direction of the data flow. So flip that around, set that aside. So let's go ahead and get our first L connector ready. You gotta have a nail or something to get these open. They're a little little funny little finicky so what i'm doing next here is trying to pull a little bit of the glue itself off that way it will actually go into the connector without having to fight it so much so just a little bit of the adhesive and the backing is now removed enough hopefully to where we can slide that under those little white tabs and then get it under the silver tabs where it needs to make the connection so that's what you're looking for then you're going to click that down and hopefully you heard that nice little snap probably not because the microphone is on my shirt now next up we know we want this to line up with this guy here but as far as left and right i'm I'm just gonna eyeball this so we're sticking out about two leds from the edge of the vent so basically where my thumbnail is over here is where i want to cut this once again right down the center 
And once again, we count. Three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we've got 38 across. That means we also want 38 for the bottom row. And once again, we're going to use this trick. And look at that. It just happens to be on a factory solder joint. I mean, these come from the factory. They're made in certain lengths and then soldered together and rolled up. Doesn't matter. Our scissors will cut right through it. Just make sure you have good scissors. So we have a top, a bottom, a left, and a right. Put the rest of this away for safekeeping. So let's start by adhering our top piece. Remember, the arrows always need to point from our input side. So it's coming up and over. So those little arrows you see on the actual strip need to point this way in our case. Before we go and stick this down, we're going to go ahead and peel off some of the adhesive and backing and get both corners on first. So this is going to that side there. Again, under these little white tabs that help guide it and then under the silver tabs and then you can feel it click. And on this side, of course, we're connecting to our input. So with both corners on, let us peel the blue part away. We were wanting to center this basically in that little ridge on this particular TV. We're trying to line it up. And yes, I'm a little far away, but you'll see in the end that it actually looks better than if you go all the way to the edge. And we can go ahead and get our input side here nailed down. And remember, this is the one we're kind of going to be a little tricky with. I'm going to leave that hang a little bit. You can't really see, but my HDMI port starts right here. HDMI 1 is right here where my finger is, so that's where I need this to be all the way down. We can let that rise up that little ramp there, but just make sure the television is thoroughly clean before you start. So let's go ahead and get this next row, and again, we'll go ahead and peel both adhesive and the backing on both ends. That's where it's easy to forget which side is which, so just always use those arrows. Our downward facing arrow is going into our final L bracket, and it's going to go back that way toward the input. So we're going to take this and basically try to just have a nice straight line all the way down to here and we will get our bottom row. It does help to have a little bit of fingernails so maybe don't cut your nails for a few days while you wait for everything to arrive that you ordered. Luckily we didn't land where a solder joint is having to go into a corner connector because this is our... Uh -oh. Actually, yeah, we kind of did. This is going to go into our little shark bite connector. This was just a heck of a coincidence, but you know, I'm almost glad that happened. Since this is a smaller TV, I'm going to just take another strip of this. Now, if you had a larger TV and this happened, try to catch it before you cut it and just cut one more and cut one off the other end. That's what I should have done. Don't worry, they won't go to waste. They'll end up in some other project, I'm sure of it. But hold on. Um... I'm not going to cut that yet because don't we have a solder joint on this end as well? Uh oh so we're going to go ahead and take one more LED and cut there so that we can cut off the one with the solder joint. Now normally I would just solder wires on there, but I'm trying to show how to do this the easy way. Just to double check, we got our length correct. So same length as the top. So once again, oh, I knew that wasn't going to last. So, arrow is pointing this way, this way, this way. Now we need to go this way. So, our arrows are going that way. We're going to go ahead and get this in here, same as the other few. Now, this part I probably should have done before I did that. But when you get this connector, there's a short side and a longer side. The shorter side here is, of course, for the LED strip. Now, you may have to bend this a little unnaturally back. And then you want to line that up so that those get punctured. And then you click it down and kind of see where it punctured that real nicely. So we're going to go right over our power cord. This is not a removable power cord. So we are covering the vents ever so slightly. I'm not all that concerned. There we are. The LEDs are mounted, but there's one more thing. Now, this is very detailed on my website, but on the LED strip, you've got plus five volts and ground. So these two extra wires, we want this on the plus five volt side. And you're just going to push it in pretty much till it stops. And the white wire, most importantly, we're skipping the middle wire. We don't need a green data wire on this. And if you want, you can very carefully use some kind of pliers until that click. Now, if you want, you can use a little bit of double-sided tape or something. But for now, we're going to move on to the next steps. With that said, let me move the camera into a safer place. 
Okay, guys, I feel a lot safer about this setup. You guys are now just on the tripod sitting on the television. You'll notice a little ramp there. Before we go sticking anything to the TV, let's get everything wired up, everything hooked up. So we know this is plugging into here. This is our level shifter and it plugs in directly to the LED strip. And it provides power from our big 10 amp power supply. Now you'll need a 10 or maybe 15 amp supply depending on how large your TV is, but we'll hook that up last. What we're trying to do is find a nice way to lay everything out so that it's kind of nice and neat and behind the uh, wall mount bracket. You don't have to worry so much about that if you're not wall mounting. Now again pictures on the website show this in far more detail, but on the Raspberry Pi, if you're holding it this way with the pin header up and to your right, on the 0W, the SD card is on this side. So on your right, you're going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and on the 6th pin, put our green wire, and the very next pin on the far right is our ground wire. Now that provides the data to the level shifter, which then steps it up to 5 volts, to drive the LED strip. Speaking of powering things, we also need to power the Raspberry Pi, and that's why my level shifter comes with not one, but two type A USB ports. And when you order one of these, you get your choice of a micro or a type C, depending on what kind of Raspberry Pi you plan to use. What next? Well, we've got a capture device here and we've got our OTG cable. We'll go ahead and plug that into the other USB port. The bottom one, or the one closest to the edge is your power and the other one is your actual USB port. So HDMI out number two, the second HDMI out goes to our capture device. We need another to go to the television. So this goes to HDMI out number one. Now normally your source device might be a streaming box of some sort. I've got a little Roku, so I'm gonna use another really short HDMI cable for my input. I may just let this hang down for the demonstration here, but this is our input device. Now this needs power too. It came with a type C to type A, as most splitters do cable and we're going to use that other port that handy little port i included on the level shifter to power this and we can neaten these up later with twist ties and our roku also needs five volt power almost every tv i've ever seen has a usb port on it so everything's got power everything is connected the only thing to do now is try to organize this a little bit and that's why i throw in one big old square of off-brand Velcro. Let's start with the splitter. Let's get a decent sized piece. I like to leave it stuck together and just treat it like double-sided tape. And if you care what it looks like, go ahead and get kind of fun with organizing. But if you're just going to hang it and forget it, like I'm going to do, just kind of stick it wherever it'll fit. We're going to take some other pieces of this. I'm going to go ahead and cut this into some smaller bits. I'm going to use a really small bit for the level shifter. But we're not going to put it on just yet. I want to get the pie probably right about here. Oh yeah, and you'll notice I'm using the hammer-on solderless pins. Uh, check up there for a card to a video on those. You can, of course, buy the Pi Zero with the headers already soldered on. We're going to Velcro that guy right there. Now you'll notice I'm not paying attention to which side is hook and which side is loop because I really don't care. I'm just sticking it wherever it'll go. And the Roku, I'm just gonna sort of put it right here. We're at the bottom of the TV and it's sticking down ever so slightly. I'm gonna just tape with some gaffer tape these cables right here just a little bit so that that sticks down just enough for the remote to see it. Sadly, the remote is bigger than the actual streaming device in this case. Oh yeah, don't we have one more piece of Velcro? I'm gonna put a small piece here. So he's going right about here. So everything is in. Yeah, just to hold that down. Our power cable coming from our big beefy power supply. I like to tape that down really well. Okay, so what I ended up doing is our power supply for the LEDs. I ran it all the way over to here and I'm going to tape it to the power cord since this is a permanent power cord. And that way we only have one wire coming off the whole thing. So let's get this up on the wall where it's going to go and power everything up and get to the software configuration. Now that we have all the hardware installed on the television, the rest is simple software configuration. Now, I've created an extremely detailed web tutorial that walks you through 
all of the necessary steps to get up and running. I keep that website up to date as things change, so always refer to the website if you run into any problems or questions. Now, as you're probably seeing now, the TV I chose is a much older TV with a rather large bezel around the screen. The results, of course, look much nicer on a bigger TV like this Sony 65-inch OLED that you're looking at now. As for the actual LED strip, I do recommend spending the extra few dollars on the SK6812 series of LEDs rather than the old standby WS2812. The SK series are newer, they have greater color accuracy, and they add a white LED to each pixel, further improving that color accuracy. Now, my particular level shifter is a bit more than a simple logic level shifter. Obviously, it's able to pass power to your LEDs, to your Raspberry Pi, and even one more USB device. I just threw in an extra port because it's handy. And of course, the QR code is there so that five years from now, you want to redo it or put it on another TV. You're not going to remember what random ass YouTuber you got this idea from. So just scan that. It takes you right to my website about this guy. And scan it if you need any more information about it. There's a whole website just for this. And just so you're aware, I don't exactly make a killing selling these things. I made them as a convenience for all the people who want to follow along on my video and don't want to have to solder. This is just a solution, a little intermediary between your LED strip, your Raspberry Pi, and your power supply. That's why I sell them. Always use the website as a resource. I try to keep my videos up to date but i can only do a full hyperion video maybe once a year the website is always going to be more up to date than any video on my channel so if this content is helpful in any way consider becoming a patron over on patreon or making a one-time contribution down below i really hope this video helps out if you have any questions at all hit that comment section below meanwhile there's a video on your screen that youtube thinks you might enjoy <laughs>